Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, thank you very much for continuing to watch Overanalyzed Adventures. I am the mythical approximation of some guy and allow me to inform you as to what happened in part one of the Shiva. Basically, we play as a broke rabbi who's given up on life. But to compound matters even more, the synagogue we work at's about to shut down because it cannot support itself anymore. Most likely because we're so depressed and we've driven away all the members of the congregation. But anyway, we get a little windfall when the cops show up to inform us that a former member of the congregation has been murdered. But not only that, he's willed us 10 G's and now we suspect number one. So in order to clear our name and to get the money without feeling guilty, we have to investigate the murder of this long lost member of our congregation. Okay? Yeah. Now we at the widow's house asking her questions about her husband's murder. I'll have to ask you some questions about what happened. Can't you just ask the police? They won't talk to me. I'm a suspect. Fine. Fine. Ask whatever you want. Finally, let's do some sleuthing now. How did Jack die? He was shot, right in the head, at close range, according to the police. Damn. Sounds like the guy was shot execution style. But on a more uplifted note, we find out what the family business is. What is the name of your business? Charming Fashion Company. Charming? Yeah, it's a strange name, but it has meaning behind it. It's based on my family's name, Sharma, and it sounds like charming. I get it real cute. My god, this guy's heart so numb it must hate puppet dogs and kittens. But hey, at least he's a decent investigator. We now know where the murder happened and we're gonna check it out for clues. But first, let's air out a little bit of backstory. Rabbi Stone? Yes? About eight years ago, c could you just tell me why? Were you and Jack happy? Yes. Y yes, we were. Then my reasons don't matter. <gasps> Are we ever gonna uncover what exactly happened between this guy and this couple? Hmm. Well, intriguing backstory will have to wait. We got a murder to investigate, damn it. All right, let's see if we can tamper with any evidence here, but oh wait, never mind that we are a rabbi, and thou shall not steal. So never once in this game are we going to take anything that does not belong to us. Instead, we just going to talk to people and mess around with computers, like this one right here. Because hacking and stealing are not the same thing, folks. To be honest with you, when I first played this game, this puzzle thoroughly stumped me. I had no idea what the hell the password could be. Eventually, I just started guessing and landed on Swarma. And then I realized that was a lady's last name. So, I guess it makes some sense. But just because it makes sense doesn't mean I have to like it. So now we have access to our buddy's inbox. And oh my, there's an email about us here. <gasps> oh no. You see, our friend, our murdered friend... He wanted to make amends for what happened eight years ago. He understands why we did what we did, even though us, the player, we still don't fully know what we did and why we did it. But now, our murdered buddy, he's in a very tricky, very bad situation, and he has no one else to turn to but us. Oh no. It's pretty obvious that our buddy was in some heavy stuff, and if only he had properly spelled our name, maybe we could have done something to prevent his murder. Oh, <sighs> well... At least now we can snoop around his inbox and still investigate this thing, damn it. We're doing it for Jack. We could have been friends again. So after a little bit of snooping around and reading through every email, we find out that our buddy was giving a lot of money to a guy by the name of Joe DeMarco. And also our friend hired an accountant named Ethan G to look into some shady goings-ons with the money at his business. And we also find out that he was going to another temple. So we got some leads here, folks. Yeah, we got a Joe DeMarco, a rabbi, and an accountant. They all walk into the same inbox and the owner's murdered. That's not really a good joke, is it? Alright, let's follow up on this Joe DeMarco guy. Because it turns out he was going to have a meeting with Ethan G. And also, with our murdered buddy. Let's go ask the missus if she knows who this guy is. Have you ever heard of the name Joe DeMarco? Joe? Joe. Joe. Yes, I've heard of Joe. He was one of our first investors. He invested in Charming? Yes. Why did you need an investor? Well, we didn't have much money to start the business with. All the banks saw us as a poor risk, so we needed independent investors. Have you ever met Joe? Jack handled the money stuff, although I know Jack didn't like him. Why not? He didn't say, he just didn't like him. But we were desperate, so we had no choice. 
How did they meet each other? I think they were introduced at the temple of all places. A temple? So Joe DeMarco is Jewish? Maybe. Why? DeMarco is not a very Jewish name. And that's important to you, is it? Not to me, no. But it's certainly significant. Hmm, it sounds like we need to check out this fancy new temple that Jack was going to before he was murdered. So this is apparently a very swanky temple. They can just leave the tour out here for any old person to steal because, ah, they so rich they got spares in the back. So let's go ahead and talk to the rabbi that runs this swanky ass place. Yes? You're the chief rabbi here at Beth Tikva. I do carry that honor. So, what can I do for you, Mr... Uh... Rabbi, actually. Rabbi Stone. Stone. Rabbi Stone. Hmm, it kind of has a ring to it. But anyway, we follow up all of our leads with the rabbi. And believe it or not, he is not very forthcoming with any information. It's almost like he has something to hide. But at least he has one important piece of information for us. I was hoping you could tell me something about Ethan Goldberg. I know he used to work here. Ethan? Oh, what a tragedy. That man did wonders for this community. It's a shame what happened to him. You know about his death? Of course. I conducted the funeral service myself. So yeah, both Jack and the accountant that worked for him were murdered under mysterious circumstances. Huh. Yeah, there's something going on here, and I don't like the cut of this rabbi's jive. I recently found out that Ethan Goldberg and Jack Lauder did business together. Really? I'm not surprised. Ethan offered his services to many people. He was a whiz with an adding machine. So I heard. I so you hear? I bet you hear a lot of things, Mr. Rabbi Greybeard. Oh, he is hiding something. People all over the world use religious communities to network and conduct business. This is nothing new. You know this, Rabbi Stone. If there is a connection, it has to do with their business dealings and nothing to do with Beth Tikva. I won't stand for our reputation being tarnished. Do I make myself clear? As Crystal. Yeah, our rabbi is not buying what this rabbi is selling. But anyway, we gotta do a little bit more investigating in front of the Google machine. That's right, that's how you do a good chunk of the investigation in this game. You Google people's names. And we find out through the power of the internet that Ethan Goldberg was murdered in front of a bar. Uh-uh, no, this does not look good at all. But oh, wait a minute. Right before we were about to leave the other rabbi, he gave us his business card. And oh my, looky here. We got some login information. So we type in his name on the Jewer net, and we guess his password by looking up some biographical information about him. So yeah, now we in. Now we have access to the other rabbi's emails. Yeah. That's how we investigate in the Shiva. So we find out via the power of reading every single email that this rabbi is just running an outstanding temple. People really like his work and are going back into the religion because he's just delivering amazing sermons. And also he set Jack up with some shady investors and also hooked him up with the accountant who died. So yeah, it's pretty obvious this rabbi is doing some shenanigans and getting members of his congregation killed. And oh... Oh, yeah, he also knows who Joe DeMarco is, so he was all lying to us when he was like, I don't know who Joe DeMarco is. No, he knows full well who Joe DeMarco is. And in fact, Joe DeMarco seems a lot like a hitman. Uh, 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 Mr. Goody Two-Shoes bringing people back into Judaism is really doing some shady stuff and we need to investigate where Ethan Goldberg got murdered now. So we go in front of a bar. Whew. Damn, you can get a lot of information from reading people's emails. I delete all mine for that very reason. Hmm, I wonder who the long-haired gentleman is. Maybe he's Joe DeMarco. Perhaps we should ask him. Do you know Joe DeMarco? Sure I do. That's my name. Well, damn, aren't we just lucky that we walked into this bar at the precise moment that he was? Otherwise, we'd be out of luck and unable to continue our investigation. Really? Yeah, what of it? You're a hard guy to track down. Well, yippee. You found me.
But of course, Mr. Joe DeMarco's not going to be forthcoming with any information. At least, not here, in this public place, where people will be able to see what we're doing and, you know, see us together. So instead, he tells us to take a step outside so we can have a word in private. Yeah, this is going to end well. You want to talk? Let's talk. But not here. Follow me. Come on, Rabbi. We'll have more privacy down here. Yeah, go into the dark, vacant subway with a guy you hardly knew who's connected to the murder of two guys. Yeah, yeah, it's a completely intelligent and smart thing to do. You've pissed off the wrong people, Rabbi. I had no problem with you. But now, I gotta kill you. I see. You're an assassin. What tipped you off, Rabbi? Was it the knife? Or was it the Joker-esque grin on this guy's face? I mean, seriously, it looks like his jaw's about to fall off. I had a feeling you were smart. Your people are in this very, very deep. What do you mean by you people? My people? You mean the Jews? A very cozy operation. What sort of operation was this? Don't think I'll be doing that. Professional courtesy. Yeah, but it does no courtesies to the plot, man. Come on! Spill the beans! Tell us what's going on! You're gonna stab us anyway! Say goodbye! You think I'll go so easily? Don't make me laugh, old man. Nah, we won't make him laugh. Instead, we'll ask him a bunch of questions, and then we'll answer his questions with more questions, confusing him, and eventually forcing him to drop the knife because he has nothing but a head filled with questions now. Go on. You don't need the knife? Prove it. Or are you nothing but a nebbish? You son of a bitch. Oh, he called him a noob, I think. But in all seriousness, this puzzle's kind of confusing because at first I had no idea as to what I was supposed to do here. But then I realized after thinking about it for a while that one of the game's key components is this whole rabbinical talk thing. And that's basically, you answer questions with questions because you know that's what rabbis do. Hell, the game was talking about it in its own intro. So the key to success to most of the conversation puzzles in this game is to answer a question with a question because that's what rabbis do. I don't need a knife to take your sorry ass. <laughs> old man, you're funny. You think your god's going to help you out of this? Perhaps. Perhaps not. <laughs> but my four years on the B'nai B'rith Yeshiva High School boxing team will even the odds. Oh damn, we rabbi kick ass now. And yeah, I'd watch that show too. What the hell, man? Perhaps you didn't hear me the first time. <laughs> now do I have your attention? Let me go, man! You know what, Rabbi? Maybe being a rabbi was the wrong career choice for you. Because clearly you probably do okay in the UFC. You have two choices. You can answer my questions. Or I throw you onto the tracks. What? You're crazy! Am I? Train's coming. Make your choice. Fine. Fine! Who sent you? I... Answer! Zelig! Zelig? Yeah, Zelig's the name of that other rabbi who we met that runs that swanky temple that's inspiring people and also killing people. Damn it, I knew we could not trust Rabbi Gandalf. He's hooked in deep with the mafioso. Did you know that? He'd find struggling businessmen like your friends Jack and Ethan and then hook them up with investors. Investors? Mafia investors. He got them involved with the mob? Yes. He got him in debt so deep they needed a tractor to pull them out. When they refused to pay, I was called in to take care of them. So you killed Jack Lauder and Ethan Goldberg? Yes. I see. Well, one question remains. What should I do with you? Just let me go. Well... Yeah, we can choose to let him go or to keep him alive. I chose to keep him alive because I'm a kind man. And also this leads to my favorite ending in the game. Oh yeah, I mean don't get me wrong, you can totally kill him if you want. Perhaps you still have some purpose to fill. I've done all I can. I've shown mercy. The rest is up to God. 
So with Jack DeMarco spared, we now know everything that happened. It turns out that the temple is hooking up poor struggling businessmen with loan sharks, and when they can no longer pay back their insanely high interest rates, they are killed. But the rabbi does not care because he gets a kickback for every time he hooks up a businessman with the loan sharks. Oh, we gotta tell Mrs. Jack about this. Oh, wait! She's gone now. It appears there was a struggle. Oh, no, she's been kidnapped. Likely for a final standoff between rabbi and rabbi. Jack, I'm sorry, Jack. As a man, I wished you all the happiness in the world. But as a rabbi, as a religious leader out of duty, I could not accept it. Can you understand? Yes, indeed. Everything's coming to a head now, folks. Jack! Forgive me, Jack. I'm sorry I cast you out. I'm sorry my actions sent you down this path. I... I... Get a hold of yourself, Stone. This isn't your doing. Yeah, now a grab I feels no longer guilty about getting that 10 G's from his dead friend. So wait a minute, that money was probably from a loan shark. Oh, do you think they're gonna try to go after us now? Zelig. Yeah, it's gonna end right here, right now, at Rabbi Gandalf's place. <coughs> now, I know this rabbi's an old man, but he must have had some strength to be able to ball gag this woman. Or maybe he drugged her. Yeah, I'm probably gonna say he drugged her, but- Oh wait, sorry! Epic final showdown time. You could have walked away. I made a commitment. And you're so good at those, aren't you? Tell me what you want. I only want this, Stone. You're going to walk over to the balcony, take a nice long look at the view, enjoy it, it costs a bundle. Then, when you've thought carefully about what brought you here, you're going to jump over the edge. And yeah, we're totally gonna do that. What, I'm not kidding, we're gonna do it, because if we don't, he'll shoot the widow. So yeah, we're just gonna play along with him, folks. Don't worry, I got a plan. Why do you want to do this, Rabbi Zelig? Zelig! You! You son of a- DeMarco, you idiot! It's not enough you bungle your assignment. You show up here? Did anyone follow you? I want my money! You want what you deserve? Fine. <laughs> yeah, imagine if we killed DeMarco. Yeah, we wouldn't have seen him die anyway. Well, actually, the widow would have been shot- Oh, sorry, spoiler alert. Anyway, we're on the balcony now, and we gotta figure out how to survive this. Although you could just jump off and end the game, but nah, we're gonna try to get the good ending here. So we gotta do a little bit of puzzling here. So that means we gotta get shot a couple of times, walk over the edge, then talk about how lovely the night is, and then oh, here's our chance to get the gun. Too bad our hands were covered in blood, otherwise we would have had a weapon to shoot the other rabbi with. But instead, we gotta engage in some rabbi combat! Dun 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 Enter every question with a question. I've spearheaded the strongest Jewish synagogue in Manhattan for over 30 years. Who are you, little rabbi? Is this how a rabbi acts? This is how the world ends. How can you face God knowing what you've done? God knows more than anyone how the world works. I'm sure he understands. You really think a rabbi acts this way? I told you, Stone. This is how the world is. Get used to it. Are there others like you? More than you can possibly imagine. Zelig, it's over. What do you have to say for yourself? Mazel tov, Rabbi Stone. I applaud you. To have come this far, you certainly are resourceful. Just what are you saying, Zelig? I do remember Jack Lauder. Very well. He came into my office eight years ago. Looking to get married, it seemed that this Zionist, pig-headed rabbi was against it. Oh, the things he said about you! Imagine my surprise when you showed up in my office. Yeah, I bet you were shocked, all right. I've done some checking up on you. In all these years, you've never learned to make concessions. Concessions? Concessions? The Jewish people are slowly becoming extinct. 
For thousands of years, we've struggled to keep our place on this planet, and you talk of concessions. As a rabbi, I do everything I can to help. And if that means refusing to conduct an interfaith marriage, then so be it. I can still look at myself in the mirror and call myself a rabbi. So that right there is why the rabbi and Jack had a huge falling out. Our rabbi does not believe in interfaith marriages. And that's it. Yeah, it doesn't really sound like that big of a deal, but then again, I'm a being a pure pixel, so I don't understand these religious matters. But what I do understand are life and death decisions. I know you don't have the guts to throw me over. And yeah, you can totally kill him if you want, but instead I decided to keep him alive. So, it's over? It's over, Mrs. Lauder. We'll leave Rabbi Zelig for the police. You're... you're hurt. You're bleeding all over. It'll be okay, Mrs. Lauder. Okay, you were shot. It's all right, let's just get out of here. Well, all right, if you say so. Yeah, don't call the police. We were just in a house where a murder happened and a woman was kidnapped. And the assailants just knocked unconscious on the balcony. Yeah, and I don't see any reason to get the police involved in this situation. But we're going to the hospital, and no argument. Sure. And we just left the rabbi there, untethered down and unhindered. Yeah, he's totally not gonna come to and try to flee the country or anything like that. Oh well, at least we got some fresh beats by Mr. Dave Gilbert himself. <laughs> So this is the game's ending. Jack's money's gonna go a long way to repairing the synagogue. Our rabbi's found his faith again. And oh yeah, the other rabbi, he's in jail. And we're gonna testify against him. And so's the widow. So he's gonna go away for a very, very long time, most likely. Hell, oh, he may even get the death penalty. Is it only in the aftermath of pain that we are justified in questioning God's fairness? Just how much pain must occur to legitimately raise the question, why do bad things happen to good people? Just how much pain? God might not seem fair. We may not always feel connected to him. That is, we may feel lonely, and often do. Yet the underlying reality of our lives is that we are always connected, whether we feel it or not, whether we accept it, or deny it, the connection is there. And since we are connected, we are responsible. Battling for goodness is how we give our lives meaning. Maybe there are no answers. Ultimately, we may never find that elusive truth. Yet ultimately, we may find something else. Meaning, significance, and fulfillment. If so, that may be enough. Yeah, it sounds like Dave Gilbert was making a plea for the resurrection of the retro point-and-click adventure. And that does it, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. We are done overanalyzing the shiva. But before we part ways, folks, allow me to clarify some of my thoughts. In particular, do you remember when I said in part one that by releasing the shiva, Dave Gilbert managed to spark a revolution? Well, I wasn't being cute there. Because you gotta see that when the shiva released... It made some noise, folks. And I ain't talking about just the AGS scene or even the adventure game scene. At least in America, the Shiva managed to do something that no adventure game had done in at least half a decade. And that's get some real exposure and become something of a critical darling. People were writing up about this game and talking about how unique it was, how different, how it was narrative driven and spiritual, how it felt more like a story than a video game. And in many ways, it created a new perspective on adventure games. No longer were adventure games just these games of yore that you played on DOSBox, but instead they were a thriving indie scene of narrative driven video games. And the Shiva became the poster child of this new indie scene. It bred legitimacy into the genre again, and exposed it to a whole new audience. And it also legitimized the AGS game engine. No longer is the AGS engine just an engine for hobbyists to tinker around with. No, it's an engine that you can make an honest-to-God commercial release with. And you know what? People will actually pay money for it. 
Lots of other developers have followed in the path of Dave Gilbert and Wadget Eye Games, and they're doing all right. Thanks in some part to the Shiva, there's now this new life in adventure games. There's this new underground scene for adventure gamers. They are people who once again are making a living at making adventure games. And that's kind of important if you're a fan of the genre. And I'll say this too, folks. There's not very many adventure game designers that got their own Wikipedia page. So yeah, this game's kind of a big deal. Maybe someone else would have came out with another game that would have triggered these events, but hey, we live in this universe and this is what happened. So that's all I gotta say, folks. Have a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. I told you I'd be back. Rabbi Stone, come with me if you want to live. I've been sent back from the future by your son to protect you from Joe DeMarco or get to the chopper. <laughs>